Hello, this is Jason, Colorado Mountain Man Survival. Thank you for joining me today on our plant series. Today we're going to talk about edible, medicinal, utilitarian, and poisonous plants. But before I get going, I want to talk to you about how I identify plants. Let's go on over here and talk about the books and the methods that I use to identify plants. When I do go out to identify new plants, I do bring a stack of books with me so I can positively identify the plants. As you can see down here, these are the books that I do bring with me. What I like about these books is they have full color pictures, they have descriptions of the plants, they're region specific. You know, I'm not looking, you know, I'm in the Rockies, I'm not looking at books that are from the East Coast or the, the Western Hemisphere. Um, these are very specific to the location I'm at. And again, uh, full color pictures. Uh, I want to stay away from books that have hand drawings. You can't identify a plant from a black and white hand drawing. Um, pictures that or photos that have plants, uh, the flowers, photos that have the leaves, photos that have the stems, just the plant as a whole, you're going to want to be able to identify those plants. You, you can't identify a plant with a single portion of it. Also, these books um, are mixed. Some of them tell me the medicinal uses. Some of them tell me the edible uses. Some of them tell me uh, just the, how to generally identify them. So I choose a plethora of books because using all of these I can easily narrow down to one book that I want to find my plant. Um, now there's also this Botany in, in a Day book. This book is really great for uh, generally identifying what plants are in what family. So this is a great reference, but this isn't really a field manual. Um, also, uh, just a quick note, this, uh, this little book here, this is more of a pamphlet that I've made up that I give to students that do come out from our, our wild edible plants walks and our wild crafter class. But as you can see, I've got you know, some full bright colored pictures and there's a little bit of identification and what all these plants can be used for. We've got a field here got a bunch of different plants, uh, one that I want to identify. So I've got my books and I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, and identify this plant with the white flowers. We've got a bunch oh, of the wow. white flowers here. We're going to sit down next to this, this flower and uh, use all my books to try to identify this plant. So I got a bunch of different specimens. You know, you don't want to sit down where you only have one plant unless, you know, there's only absolutely one plant in the valley and you absolutely want to know what that one plant is. But having a nice variation of the specimen is always best uh, to help identify it so you can look at uh, the leaves, the flowers, and different stages of growth. So I got a bunch here we're going to look at. Um, so this book, uh, one of the ones I use quite a bit. Uh, first page I opened to, to was OSHA. You know, we'll look at OSHA. Uh, is there anything that resembles this flower with OSHA? Sure, it's got similar flowers, but the leaves are vastly different. So this is obviously, to me, not, not OSHA. So I'm going to flip through this book and continue on until I can find exactly the right flower, the right stem, the right leaf that looks exactly the same as what I'm looking at. So here we go. We got this, this flower right here, and it looks like yarrow. I'm going to check out the flowers. The flowers look similar. I'm going to look at the leaves. The leaves look similar. Um, the stalk looks the same. Um, now that I believe that I've identified it in this book, I'm going to go ahead and identify it in the rest of my books. Because you need multiple points of reference when you're out here identifying something that you're going to put in your body. Because I could be wrong. I could be possibly looking at poison hemlock or water hemlock. We don't know. You know, we're new at this. So um, make sure you do know before you put it in your mouth. So I'm going to flip through this book. I really like this book. It doesn't do so much as far as telling me what the plants are used for, but it does tell me uh, or help me identify flowering plants in Colorado. And since we're in Colorado, this is a really great book. So I'm going to flip through this book and I'll see a bunch of different flowers, plants with white flowers, and I'll just keep going um, until I find the, the plant that I want to look or that I'm trying to identify. And again, Alpine yarrow. It's got the nice flowers here. Um, the same, 
same look of the flower, same look of the leaves. You know, there's so much identification, sorry, so much more information here that'll help me identify the plant. So I'm gonna set this book right here, yarrow, or at least we think it's yarrow. Again, I really wanna know what this plant is before I stick it in my mouth. So I'm gonna flip through the next book and find yarrow. And I'm gonna compare these pictures and the identification on all these, on everything on this page. And I'm gonna set this guy here. So now I've got three books that are all identifying this plant. So I'm you know, even more confident that what I'm looking at here is in fact yarrow. Well, let's be double sure or quadruple sure. So I'm gonna flip through the next book and see if I can find, again, we'll just flip straight to yarrow. And I'm gonna look at the pictures. I'm gonna read the description. That definitely looks like yarrow. So here's another book that confirms this plant is yarrow. So I'm going to set that to the side. Now I've got three more books. I could rifle through these three more books. Um, we'll do just one more. And, and I do take all these books out with me when I'm going to identify a new plant. Um, this one has yarrow, but it has no pictures. So I'm not going to use this one as a book to identify the plant. But these four have identified this plant as yarrow, so this is probably a very useful book on letting me know what I can use yarrow for. As you can see here, you know, we've got some hand drawings. Again, not great to be used for identifying a plant, but that doesn't mean that this book isn't any good because it doesn't have colored pictures. It's got a lot of information that's written down. So now I've got four books here that confirm that this plant is yarrow. Now I feel pretty confident that it, it is in fact yarrow. Uh, if I want to be super sure, then I would bring a uh, fellow uh, plant enthusiast out here with me and have them identify this plant as well. So these are the steps I go through. I come out and I find the plant that I don't know. I spread my books around me. Uh, and then I go and find that plant and I'll rifle through it um, until I find exactly what it is I'm looking for. Now it's very important that when you do look for these plants, that everything is key on exactly the same. If I look for this plant and I see the flowers match the description in the book, but the leaves don't match, then I'm probably not looking at that same plant. Um, if the flowers and the leaves match, yet the stem is really weird, vastly different. Maybe this one has is a pink stem or a, a bright yellow stem or something like that, who knows? Uh, those little differences could mean I'm looking at a completely different plant than what I do think that's in this book. I don't want to force the plant to be what I want it to be. I want it to be exactly right.